Hello, hello. So as you could see in the beginning, today we'll be building a cross-platform speedometer or like a calorie chart, you could say. And we'll be using our favorite library for adding cross-platform charts, charts, which will be victory. So first things first, grab victory by doing yarn add or npm install at the bottom here. And then after that, we can close up the terminal since we are not going to need that one anymore. So, so far, I just have an empty React project here that I launched using Create React App. And I'm just going to go get started here. And I, I created a few uh, comments here to kind of show what we we're doing. So, the first thing we'll be, do, we'll be doing is to create some state because we need some sort of state with our data. So I'm just going to start off by creating a very simple use state hook here. And I'm going to be using TypeScript. So I'm going to try to type this one. And uh, for this chart, I'm going to be using uh, three data points. And uh, maybe for your needs, you will be using more than three or any number but for me I always be using free for this chart so I'm just gonna type it so it's always expecting an array of free entries here and uh, yes so after adding that I need to be sure I have these commas in here and uh, since it cannot be null I need to put in some defaults here so I'm going to put in an array, I'm going to put x, going to be 1, y is going to be 0, x2, y1, uh, x3, y2. Just, just some random values here to get started. All right. So this might look a little confusing, but uh, it's going to make a lot more sense now since we're going to go down and actually render out our, our chart here. So because we are going to be using a standalone component, we will um, actually wrap everything in an SVG here. And uh, inside our SVG, we can put our victory pie, which is going to be the component of choice for creating this um all right so let's uh, actually import that one up here from victory then jump down here again all right so the first thing we put in is our data if we save that oh seems like a spelling error here. All right. Okay, cool. So, so far we're not seeing anything because we don't really add it with a hide or anything yet. So uh, let's actually do that as the next thing. So outside my component, I'm going to define width here. I'm going to put it to just 300 pixels to begin with. And then a height here, also 300. Now I'm going to jump down here, remove this h1 tag. And then on the wrapping div, I'm just going to add some inline styles here. So height equal height width equal width. And then I'm going to jump down to the SVG here and I'm going to add some more inline styling here. And it's just going to be setting the height to 100% and the same for the width. 
cool. Now, because I'm logging down my SVG to this size, I also need to apply add height to the victory pie itself. So let me just do that. All right, cool. We still don't see anything, but that's all right. Now, let's add some more props to our victory pie here. So I'm going to add in standalone, because this one is quite important, since I, that, I think that's the reason we're not seeing anything yet. Yep, there we go. That's our first version. Now, we need to add in some more props to actually get it how we want it. So the angel, angel so this is the, the spacing between the data. I'm going to put it to two. I'm also going to add an inner radius. This is the one that's going to make it look like it's less of a pie chart. And here I'm going to add in the width divided by two and then minus 20. And the reason why I'm using these width, do this width here is to make it a little responsive. So if I were to change the width and height, uh, it would have a similar look, right? Now, in order to make it a speedometer, we need to add a start angle. So this is where our chart will start. I'm going to put 130 degrees. And for the end angle, it's just going to be minus 130. Okay. So now it's starting to look like something here, right? Cool. Now, the next part is to actually add a little bit of colors here. And uh, the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to add a style prop. And the style prop for uh, the victory elements are a little different than the normal React style, style prop. So in here, we actually have access to something called data. And in here, we can put a fill color. Now, I could put red here. But I could also pass in a function. And that's what I'm going to do. And uh, this function is going to have a property inside an object called datum. And in here, we can, depending on what data we get here, we can render the color. So let me make that helper function up here. Let's call it get color. It takes in an x which is going to be a number. And uh, depending on that x, let's say that x is 1. We're going to return orange, for example. If that is 2, we're going to return yellow. If it's 3, we're going to return green. OK. So now down here, we can do get color and then pass in this datum key. And on this datum key, we should have a value called x. And that's going to reference to this x up here. OK. So let's see if that actually will render. It seems like we're getting an error here. And the reason for that is we don't have a default up here. So the typing is a little screwed. So we're going to put in just a default blue here. And now the typing should be all right here. OK, looking good. Other well, than I don't really like yellow, so let's change it to something else. Maybe purple is better. Cool, 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 cool. Now. Let's uh, let's go to the next step. So now let's try to generate some data. So right now I just have this uh, random start data here. You can see if I change these, we're gonna get. Uh, we should have this chart changing, and you can see it automatically will calculate how much percentage is five out of. 5 plus 2 plus 3, which is 10, right? So that's pretty neat. Now, let's make a function here for generating some new data, because we want to try to uh, randomize data to see how 
yeah, to see how the chart behaves. So let's just call this one change data. And then now let's try to generate a random number. Okay. So to generate a random number, we need to call math random. This is going to return a number between 0 and 1. And if you want a number between, say, 0 and 100, we need to do times 100. All right. If we don't want to get that zero, we need to plus it with one. Now we will get a value between one and 100. Uh, one thing though, is that this will return a number between zero and one. So that means it can also return 0 0.172345. It can generate a bunch of uh, yeah decimals. So we actually need to wrap everything in a in a rounding function. And I'm going to use my floor for this case. Oh, let's just add a comment here. Okay. So that could, that's going to be our first piece of data. Now I'm going to calculate the second value, which I'm just going to set it to whatever this random number will be and then divide it by three. And then the last value can be 100 minus, yeah, the random value we get and then y2, right? With this information, we can set our data. And uh, we can kind of copy this one up here, actually. And then we can insert our y values. So the first one's going to be random value. Second one's going to be y2. This one's going to be y3. Okay. So now we have a function in place. If you want to trigger this function, we're going to cre just create a button for this purpose. And I'm just going to call it change data. And I'm going to do on click change data here. Okay. So now we should be able to click here and have the data changing. Now the changes are very instant here. So if we want a very sweet animation, like a transition between the data updates, we can simply add animated and then add in a property here. It could be duration, set it to 500. So now every time the data changes, we are also getting an animation. All right, cool. Now, so far so good. Now let's see here. So we have the change data function. Now let's look for adding the label in and the animation on the uh, the label. So for that, I'm actually gonna go down here, still inside my SVG. I'm gonna add a victory animation. And inside here, I'm gonna add has an animation property, which is going to be duration, as you saw before. And it's going to put 1000 here. And now I'm going to put in the data that I want to animate. And for me, I just want to animate a value. I'm just going to call it left. And this is just going to be the first value in my data array. And I'm going to grab the Y value. This is the one we are updating up here. Okay. Now inside here, we can pass a render power up, a function here that can, well, render something, right? And um, I'm going to render a, uh, I'm going to do a return here. I'm going to do a React fragment. And that's because I want to add in two labels here. And I don't necessarily want to put it inside a container. Okay. Now, in order to access this data that we pass in here inside our render function, I'm just going to expose this props here. Okay. Now, let's add a victory label in here. And uh, let's add a few properties to this one. 
first one is going to be text ang anger. I want to put text in the middle. And a vertical anger. Also going to put middle here. Now, the two next props is going to be X. So this is where to put it. And for me, I'm just I'm going to put it in the middle. So I'm going to do width minus 2. Or divided by 2, sorry. And then the Y value is going to be the width divided by 2 and then minus 20. I think that should be solid. Now if I save that, no changes has happened. So that's because I'm missing the text one here, which is quite important. And here I'm just going to do math round. I want to make sure I round the number. And I'm going to access props. And inside props I'm going to access left. And the reason why I can access left here is because that's the data I'm passing in here. And it's accessible inside props and then the name here. Okay, now here it's not really sure about the typing. So I need to do a cast to a number here because it thinks it's a string. That's okay. We can just add that in here. Now we get a label here. And we probably want that one to be a little bigger. So we can add in this normal style tag here. Not a style tag as up here, but a normal one. Well, we can add in, let's say, 40 as our size. Okay, now I can copy paste this one down here to add another label. And this time I want to move it a little down. Like I want to make, put it below, so I need to do plus a number here. I'm just going to put 30. Okay, and I want to make it a little smaller this time. And the text is just going to be the total amount. And I'm just going to put in 100. This is going to be a static value. OK. Now, I could probably move it up a little bit. So I'm going to add pass in 20 here. Cool. Now, this is not looking too bad. Uh, we could do a little more adjusting. So. We could add in corner radius up here in case we want a little bit of some rounded edges. And yeah, that's looking a little better. Now let's try to click change data. All right. This number is changing depending on this value up here. Remember? We put in uh, data zero, so the first entry, and then the y value. So this is the value we see here. And uh, yeah, it makes sense, right? So you can see we kind of get a little bit of flicker here with these labels. If we're tired of those labels, we can just pass in labels here and then return null. So I'm passing a function here, that returns nothing. And the labels are gone. All right. That's uh, all I want to show today. And uh, if you're using React Native, you can just copy paste this entire code, go up here, change this with Victory Native. And uh, you also have a chart in React Native that works. So. Uh, Pretty neat, pretty neat. Hope you learned something. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.